In this video you'll learn how to create character illustration from sketch and how to add stunning texture without any brushes. I'll show you how to start drawing from idea in rough composition, then you can download my sketch and learn must-know tips to trace artwork in Adobe Illustrator, and after this you'll see how to add noise texture using freeform gradient and opacity mask. By the end of this tutorial you'll be able to create your own character illustrations and use texturing techniques from this video in all your artworks. You're watching TNT Tutorials, let's move on! First of all, it is necessary to concentrate on the composition of primitive shapes. Simplify everything to rectangles, squares, circles, ovals and triangles. Keep your idea in mind and look for the best way to show it with these primitives. You need to get a contrast of size and contrast of shapes. After that, you can adapt your original idea to this composition. Clarify the shapes, Use references for clothing or shoes and generally do everything to get a live picture. In this illustration I see my task as showing every detail as openly as possible. This image should be read in a second. Each detail must carry the mood that you want to express through the illustration. I wanted to convey the spirit of the streets, the passion for rap and hip-hop. The number of details is quite limited by the style of this illustration so everything has to be balanced. The characteristic feature of this style is big limbs, minimal approach and a clear message. Again, by the clear message I mean a picture that is understandable to the viewer at once, in a second. As you can see, the sketch is almost ready, you can download it by the link in the video description and create this illustration along with me. Select web, enter 2000 here and here, and then click on Create. Rename this layer to Sketch, click on File, Place and find path to downloaded sketch. Place it like this and lock this layer. Create a new layer to continue. Today I'll show you extremely straightforward workflow, but there are a few crucial hints that you need to learn and keep in mind to create illustrations without any issues. Hold Alt or Option key and use Scroll to zoom in and out. Hold space to use the hand tool and navigate, press P to use the pen tool, select fill icon and click on none. You can change stroke width here in properties. I recommend you to click on stroke and select round cap and round join. To deselect path immediately and continue with a new path, hold Ctrl or Command and click somewhere. Don't drag handles too much, simply adjust direction for them and continue. Hold Alt or Option key and drag the handle to make a sharp corner. Press A to use the Direct Selection tool. With the Direct Selection tool you can adjust handles and move points. To delete a needed point, press P for the pen tool and simply click on this point. You can also add points by clicking on the line. You don't need to trace each object or shape separately. Simply trace all lines as you want, the only thing that you'll need to do anyway is to leave short tails like this. We'll use the Shape Builder tool to delete them later. Here you can trace like this, then press C for Scissors tool and cut lines. Press V for Selection tool, select these parts and delete them. You can trace all lines with sharp corners. Then press A to use the Direct Selection tool, select needed point and drag dot to round corner. You can select a few points and round corners at once. You can roughly create line and then with the pen tool selected, hold Alt or Option key and adjust line like this. Let me show you another great tip. To create chain, press M for rectangle tool and create a rectangle. Increase stroke width and round corners. Click on object and select expand. After this, swap fill and stroke. I think that stroke width is too bold, so let's press Ctrl or Command plus A to select all lines and decrease stroke width. Now you can create a chain like this. 
Simply hold Alt or Option key to make a copy, rotate rectangles and change proportions a bit. Then select all lines again, move them a bit to see sketch, press Shift plus M to use the Shape Builder tool, hold Alt or Option key and click to delete unneeded lines. Then press Ctrl plus A to select all lines again, press V for selection tool, move everything back and continue. Press L to use the ellipse tool and then pick the shear tool right here. Use the shear tool to change ellipse like this. Press Ctrl or Command plus C to make a copy and then press Ctrl or Command plus F. Hold Alt or Option key plus Shift and make ellipse smaller. After you'll trace everything, press Shift plus M to use the Shape Builder tool. You can also find it right here in the left panel. Press Ctrl or Command plus A to select all lines and with the Shape Builder tool selected, hold Alt or Option key and cut all unneeded lines. After this you can download colors by the link in the video description and place them here. I also recommend you to put them in a separate layer. We don't need sketch layer anymore, you can delete it or simply make invisible. Lock layer with colors and press Ctrl or Command plus A to select all lines. Press K on your keyboard to select the Live Paint Bucket tool, hold Alt or Option key, pick Needed color and then click on Needed area. Hold Alt or Option key to select another color, release Alt or Option key and click on another shape to apply color. After you'll apply colors, click on Object, Expand. In this window, deselect Stroke and click OK. Press Ctrl or Command plus Shift plus G to ungroup lines and objects. Press V for Selection tool and click somewhere to deselect everything. Then click on any object to select them, right-click and ungroup again. You can also ungroup objects by clicking on Object, Ungroup. At last, after all these manipulations, we are ready to add textures. Pay attention to each step and you won't have any issues. Let's select this object and make a copy. Press Ctrl or Command plus C, Ctrl or Command plus F. Now, as we have a copy selected, let's apply different color to it. You'll be able to change color anytime, so don't worry, you can experiment. Click on Window and select Transparency. No matter where Transparency panel or icon will appear, I strongly recommend you to drag it here. We didn't deselect this shape, so we can see it in this little window. Click on Make Mask, then click on Clip. After this, Select this white window. It is white for now because we didn't create anything in this opacity mask. And yeah, we're in opacity mask mode after we've selected this window. This is why we don't have any layers from your illustration here. This is crucial. In opacity mask mode you can change only opacity mask elements. Your original layers will be untouched. Here you have only black color, white color and all shades of grey. I won't scare you anymore, you just need to keep in mind what I told you. Also, before we'll continue, let me show you how to exit opacity mask mode. Simply click here. You have all your layers untouched and ready to work. So, let's select this copied object with the changed color, click on Make Mask, then click on Clip and select this window to enter opacity mask mode. Press M for rectangle tool, don't care about the color and create a huge rectangle. Then open gradient panel and drag it right here. You should have these two panels on the left and on the right. Select freeform gradient. You have two modes here, points and lines. With points mode, hold shift, select these points and click here to delete them. Double click on this point and select white color. Then click somewhere to add a few points more. They should have white color also. In gradient panel select lines, 
and simply connect these points. After you'll do this, select Points mode in the Gradient panel again. Watch how you can move and change this line. You can add more points and have much better control on this line, or you can delete these points as I already showed you. Create a new point somewhere, double-click on it and select black color. Make sure that you have the deepest black, only zeros here. Now the fun starts. Click on Effect, Texture, Grain. In Grain type select Steepled. You'll be able to change these values anytime. Let me show you how. Click OK, Properties panel and select this applied effect. Here you go. To see all freeform points again and be able to change them, simply select rectangle and press G. If you think that noise is too rough, click on Effect and select Document Raster Effect Settings. Let's try 500. Now it looks much smoother. Enter 200 and you'll see different results. After this use white points as a texture brush. If something will go wrong, simply continue to move points, picture will get fixed. As you can see, here we still have some noise. In case if you don't want to have it here, deselect rectangle with freeform gradient, pick the deepest black color, press P to use the pen tool and create a shape like this. Then use the Direct Selection tool to adjust this shape. Click on this window to exit Opacity Mask mode and do the same with any other object that you want. Don't forget that you can always return to the Opacity Mask mode, select Rectangle, press G and change Texture. Also change Resolution to get the best results. You can change Resolution anytime also. If you learned something new from this tutorial, drop a comment below, let me know if everything was clear enough for you and what you liked about this video. If you enjoyed this tutorial, support this channel by clicking on subscribe and what's most important by clicking on the bell icon to get notifications about newest tutorials from TNT. I would also appreciate if you will click thumbs up and will share this video. This was TNT Tutorials, see you next videos!